Dogs, all the zog in time. War means fighting, and fighting means killing. Nathan Bedford Forrest. War is the business of barbarians. Napoleon Bonaparte. The orcs are a race in Warhammer 40,000. Commonly known as Greenskins or the Green Tide, they're probably the most numerous and infestive race in the entire 40k setting, or at least on par with the Tyranids. They have a Warhammer fantasy equivalent, the only major difference being that fantasy orcs have a slightly lower level of technology relative to the setting. Because of Games Workshop's desire to keep all their properties under hard lockdown they are now called Aurochs in Age of Sigma. So we're actually, going back in time to when Orcs were named Eurox. Here we go, let's break some Zoginids. Overview. Orcs are the most successful race of the 41st millennium heresy. Who let them humies an heir? Despite their entire lack of structured educational training, they seem to be very proficient with all kinds of technology, which they inevitably utilize for their armaments of which firearms and vehicles are the most common. Blamed away in the fluff by their origins they were created by the old ones to be a warrior race called the Krork, and some of them the mech boys were genetically hardwired to have a pre-programmed proficiency for technological engineering. Unfortunately, the old ones died before they could finish their little science project, specifically the psychic control mechanism. The ancient Krok were known to have fought the ancient Elder Empire when the latter was at the peak of its power and were implied to have been a considerable threat to Harlequin and M32 compares the nearly invincible hordes of the beast as being like children compared to them. The only Krok to exist in the present day one of Trazin's exhibits wore exo armor that was more sophisticated than power armor and stood 12 meters tall. This means that such war machines simply fight everything, everywhere, all the time. In principle, orcs can loot just about anything. The minor greenskins, such as Grotz goblins can construct several working vehicles and machines out of mere scrap they actually can't but orcs believe they can so it happens see. Few paragraphs below. The orcs derive much of their success from their reproductive process orcs are, essentially, a psychosensitive hybrid of animal and fungi, not unlike a very complex version of a lichen. One advantage is a redundancy of vital organs, making them able to easily survive events such as head transplants in the fact that it's not easy to kill an individual orc since they could very well shrug off injuries that would put a human to a crippled state. In fact there is a Valhallen folktale about a relative finding an orc, thawing it out only for it to attempt to kill them. Another advantage is their ability to grow larger as they win more battles. Due to the aforementioned psychosensitivity an orc who is winning a fight is enjoying himself, which causes fluctuations in the gestalt field that all orcs generate. These fluctuations supercharge the orc's physiology, causing the orc to gain muscle mass and evolve. Consequently, if an orc should somehow be incapable of fighting like being imprisoned, they will actually devolve instead, causing the orc to become pudgy and lethargic. This was observed during Xenology where a captive orc was eventually found morbidly obese when the Inquisitor brought him out for dissection. Hence, the saying orcs is made fair fightin' and winning applies literally in their case, as the incentives of fightin' and winning are what makes or breaks an orc. In addition, the fungal part of their physiology allows orcs to reproduce asexually en masse through underground fungal colonies that act as self-sustaining ecosystems. Reproductive spores enter the topsoil, produce fungal mycelia that assimilate base nutrients and could exchange genetic information with other mycelia, putting normal human sexual reproduction to shame, and eventually produce lesser orcoids squigs and grots. The grots cultivate the protein-rich squigs in preparation for the emergence of the greater orcs, which take longer to develop. All in all, this cycle was designed to fight against the Necrons, which sterilized a planet to its bacteria. Orcs can terraform a barren planet into a veritable paradise this way, though what defines paradise is a point of discussion. If you like endless wars and tribal conflicts in a mushroom-rich planet, it probably is. Is you say in Deer's Fangs what don't like fight in Fairover? Demumius is real good at marking Ford's Ferris take rump, so they must like fight in. Though all orcs discharge reproductive spores throughout their lives, the most significant and numerous emissions occur when an orc is dismembered or dies. Like all fungi, these spores benefit enormously from decaying matter to draw nutrients from, such as enemy corpses. That heavy bombardment or entrenched warfare against an orc force just results in thousands to millions of new orcs, similarly to tyrannids. The concept of bloodlust is especially applicable to orcs, as combat effectively serves as the orc reproductive process with all associated hormonal incentives. Due to this, an orc infestation is incredibly hard to handle if kept unchecked since it won't take them long to get enough boys to launch a full-scale wag. 
to overrun an entire planet and necessitate exterminators. We can use flamethrowers, plasma, nukes, melter weapons or anything high energy to eradicate any spores and fungi, saving the world from the eventual exterminators. But then again, efficiency ain't manly and grimdark enough compared to good old spore releasing bolters, chainswords and artillery. Orcs only have two popular combat doctrines. Choppy, which involves giving your opponents a good stomping up close, and Shooty which involves spitting out as many bullets as possible with an assortment of shooters, and the faster it shoots, the better. Because of the orcs naturally low penchant for accuracy, they typically get around this problem in two methods. The first one is to have a gun that simply shoots bullets as fast as orcally possible that the wielder should be able to hit something eventually strapping two or more shooters together as a crude, but effective way to go about this. The second one is to make the gun really killy every time it shoots, like putting a dangerously high explosive shell in a canal that can obliterate an entire building in one shot. Orcs are commonly believed to be stupid and superstitious by the other races of the 40k world, but they can also be cunning and quick on the draw. Orcs are always ready for a fight and while you can trick them, they quite like the idea of tricking people back. Their philosophy of the red ones go faster is the ultimate truth. Because of the aforementioned Gestalt field, orc vehicles painted red will ultimately go faster than orc vehicles that are not painted red. Because the orcs believe that red makes everything go faster this unijit thinks that the red ones don't go faster? They don't know that anything painted red makes it the best and makes it go faster cause red is best. No it ain't. Ya bleeding squig. Green is best. Boots up the bog shut yeah gob, he was talking about the trucks, yajit. We can assume that this cuts both ways, with enemies such as the blood angels and white scars gaining the same boost due to their use of red paint. A hallmark of green skin civilization is the red. Like war, a term of their oft forgotten true language, deafening volume is a key part of its proper pronunciation. Same. It is always written in all caps, with at least 3 as and an exclamation point. <laughs> Occurs when an orc population reaches critical mass and a dominant warbus appears. A warbus is an orc alpha who is bigger than all the other orcs and have proven his right to lead by either his sheer size or crumping all the other big orcs that thinks otherwise. Lesser orcs sense the presence of the boss in the orc's psychic field and follow him on what is often described as a combination of pub riot and holy war with a dash of genocide. <laughs> Accomplishes two things it weeds out weaker orcs, keeping the species strong and it facilitates genetic exchange and reproduction as the orcs die and release spores. The orc economy is based on teeth, more information on which can be found here. Orc religious beliefs also help manage their population. Orcs believe in two gods, Gork and Mork, which according to the orcs are engaged in a perpetual battle between themselves. One is cunningly brutal where the other is brutally cunning, which is in itself a good summary of the orcish race. The former like regular boys will punch anything in front of them first and only fall back on a more cunning trick if that doesn't work. While the latter like the many odd boys will try the sly trick first and only fall back on straightforward violence second. Unfortunately, no one can decide which god is which, nor can the orcs decide which is better cunning brutality or brutal cunning. These differences of opinion tend to lead to gigantic brawls, yet another method of keeping the orc race strong, warlike and in check. Their division also keeps them perpetually divided, for it has been theorized that if the orcs were to ever unite in one big <laughs> their gestalt reality warping field might just as well turn omnipotent and crush all opposition. Orc society is effectively the perfect society. Its society is a cretocracy a government ruled by the strongest, fitting for orcs and maturity as all disputes are settled fairly quickly and painfully just the way they like it. The economy is steady, as teeth grow and rot at a reliable rate. Once a boss is in charge, mostly everyone falls into place, and the orcs go and get shit done. Also, they probably killed the imperial fists. All of them. Scratch that, one of them survived. Damn it, show me the jit that let him live and I will crump him so hard he will sell us century. Fun fact the orcs use black and white on their shock troops, because it reminds them of the lunar wolves who destroyed them at Alana. The orcs do not fear death, but they do fear the lunar wolves. That is right, Horus traumatized them as a race more than the fucking Grim Reaper. Note why would you fear death, if death usually results in you being reborn into several thousands of yourself. Horus probably swept the spores up post battle and that's why they fear him. Though it's also worth mentioning that orcs harbor a natural fear of Commander Farsight 2, whom they know as the Red Commit. 
Though given that the Dawnblade consumes the souls of those it kills, it's likely that any orcs cut down by Farsights do not reproduce. But then again he was committing orc genocide long before he found the blade so, and of course, we can't just forget the final great fear of the orcs, Commissar Yerik. The only normal human that can cause orcs to actively panic. On the other hand Yerik, Farsight and Moon Wolfie boys are also considered source of prime fighting so despite being scary they actually also attract orcs. Hey if it works. Orc life cycle. When a orc wags they release spores into the air. Depending on how many orcs are on a planet this can either be negligible to a planet's environment or kick off a terraforming or a forming process. The main feature generated by this process are the spawning shrooms. These shrooms like dark places similar to normal mushrooms, but are connected to the spawning of snotlings, Gretchen, squigs, and boys. Boys created by this process are just youths. Typically they sneak out in the night to avoid getting eaten by bigger and tougher predators, that is other orcs, so that they can get stronger by killing the local fauna. In the cases of imminent <laughs> it's possible that these youths come out during the day to join the fighting. The only concepts they know initially from spawning is how to fight and that killing a bigger orc will make them bigger. They aren't surprised by orc technology, but understand it very little, in one case referring to a shooter as a boomfist. Orc technology, a perfect example of orc tech. Powered by make-believe and the essence of love, and patched together with duct tape and chewing gum, the emperor himself has truly never seen finer craftsmanship or innovation. Occasionally, if a tech cast gets into control of an orc society, ridiculous constructions can result. Best example we know about is the Talent Reach Empire and its central stronghold Goro. A scrap world. Goro was full of things that shouldn't have worked at all. Horus notes that individual bits of architecture inside were just too mad for any human to contemplate and could withstand the normally. Planet killing weapons on the Vengeful Spirit and Imperator Somnium the Emperor's own flagship. The orcs defending it were far more advanced than most everything from their augmentations to the accuracy of their ship's weapons and had actually built a plasma reactor to hold their world together. Their function mostly relied on the orcs gestalt. As the core began to fail as the emperor, Horus and their respective posses carved through the population. Once the emperor killed the resident Warbus and psychically burned the rest of the orcs a preview of what he'd eventually do to Horus the system went into total meltdown. How orc technology works is up for debate. As written orc technology is beyond comprehension by the majority of races. Their weapons tech work and other races can use them, but not as effectively. Tech priests have taken apart orc guns and reassembled them to what they assume is the same configuration only to find that they don't work anymore. This leads to two schools of thought on orc technology. The Angen theorem of orcoid mechamorphic resonant kinetics. Every orc is a sicker. The Angen theorem postulates that orc technology works mainly because the orcs think it does. The explanation is that the subconscious gestalt psychic field that all orcs generate enables their technology to function. The stronger the field, the more unlikely their technological achievements become. In older versions of the fluff, if you hand an orc a pipe and convince him it's a gun, it will shoot bullets. They're like reality warping physical gods, only weakened by their stupidity and their preference to fight each other instead of uniting. Hence why the Imperium still manages to survive in these dark times. In later versions, this has been toned down from impossible to merely unlikely because GW won't keep anything canon that's that badass. If orc technology is held together by spit, duct tape, and hope, then the orc's psychic field provides the hope. For example a war truck with a mob of orcs in it sputters and dies. The boys hop out and have a look. One of the boys examines the readouts and says to the knob driver, The bloody fang is out of gas said knob hits the offending orc in the face so hard that he falls unconscious. Look there, eyes the boss, and I says I filled this fang up re before we left. The rest of the boys look at each other, halfway convinced. He is the biggest orc among them, and he did just prove it. Maybe he did fill it up right before they left. That's the sort of thing one does when one's in charge. The boys begin to file back into the war truck, and with a satisfied nod, the knob gets in and cranks her up. Because the boys believe that there is plenty of fuel in the truck, one drop does for 10, and the war truck and the boys arrive just in time for the next fight. The purpose for this sort of thing is primarily to compensate for the orc's technological disadvantage by comparison with races like the TAU, Necrons, or the Elder. For example, a meat cleaver in the hands of an orc can tear through the toughest ceramite armor if the orc believes it will. For anyone but an orc, a power weapon or the equivalent would be required to do so. This tends to work well for them, but not for the other races of the galaxy. Imperial observers note that orc weapons generally will not function in the hands of a non-orc. 
The only reason the orcs haven't exploited the limits of their generated gestalt field by creating easily made but devastatingly powerful weaponry that could eclipse the weapons of the other races is that they themselves do not know nor understand that they create said field. They believe that their equipment works because that's how the universe wants it to work, not because they themselves are making it work. Which I guess makes it true. This, in turn, makes for an interesting paradox. If orcs managed to understand the physical universe as it is, they would not believe their weapons work, thus, stripping them of their psychic advantage. If there is a little ounce of disbelief, this would wreck their ability to believe hard enough so as to manipulate reality. This said, orky know what's do have a say in stuff that the orcs build. Mech boys build much of the stuff they do because they have been genetically ingrained with the knowledge on how to make and maintain their technology. While much of their tech runs because they want to, the basis is that the orcs can actually build a conceptually working frame to get all orky on. This explains how orcs can build such technological wonders as the shock attack gun, which propels snotlings through the warp and into the armor, tanks, and bodies of their enemies. Also, there have been instances of orc tech working well in the hands of other races, at least for a time till it blows up. Be careful though, most orc players have very deep set opinions on how orky tech works, and debates between them can generate much rage. This argument becomes unstable interesting when looked at too closely. In particular, if this was the case sickers would be able to combat orc technology more effectively. In fact if orcs created a psychic field then sisters of silence could easily destroy it, causing orc constructions to not work, unless orcs psychic field is completely unrelated to warp energies. Which would give us a very interesting part of lore. However, keep in mind on the tabletop that sisters of silence don't flat out destroy all warp energies. They certainly negate it, but it's perfectly possible for a sicker to get a good roll and fire off a smite into his target. And if all the orcs are really sickers, then they'd probably overpower the negative energy shield the sisters have. We know orcs definitely have a cyclic field, and the sisters don't seem to be effective against it unless we are talking with boys, which seem to be kind of border case. Also, <laughs> energy is something almost completely different than the psychics other races use, and it tends to ignore negate some of the restrictions other sickers have. That would suggest that the old ones when creating orcs ancestors actually used some other form of psychic phenomenon that is unrelated to or isolated from the warp somehow. This might suggest that orcs gestalt psychic field is actually very advanced form of technology similar to that used to create the webway which is basically parts of the warp that are isolated from the warp itself or alternatively that there is some kind of third reality energy meta level that is not related to the warp or reality but intersects both because we know orcs gestalt field works as well in the warp as in reality, evidenced by their starships traversing the warp and functioning. In the end we do not know but there is something in there, probably. Or it could all be powered by a bunch of grots duct taped together. Who knows? In the end, we should look at it like the orcs themselves. If it works, who cares? Worrying about it just means less time crumping gets. Orcs and the Emperor. An extension of the all orcs are sickers theory is that the Emperor's continued existence despite the fact his throne is in serious need of and mo is the fact that the orcs believe it to be so. As any self-respecting wid boy will tell you, what the boys think will happen up and see below. So if they think the Emperor is still alive then alive he will be. Probably cause they're not stupid enough to realize he's a corpse more fucked than a slanishy cultist at Cyphus Kane's place. Hang on a second. I think they be mark in front of us. Well, maybe we. Outer go stomp some humies. That's right. The chaos boys are messing with you orcs. Go stomp them in the name of the emp. For <coughs> the wag. Eem. Orcs and Yerik. Another stupid theory. Yerik is still alive past the normal age for humans because Gaz and his boys think he should. Not that he is taking rejuvenant treatments to extend his life like any other hero of the Imperium. Also orcs believe a glance from Yerik can kill them so it does. Not that he's heard the story and decided to equip himself with a bionic eye with a laser to scare orcs. Clearly Yerik will live longer than the Emperor due to orcs believing in him. Orc technology is more advanced than it seems. Cultural collapse, reorientation of belief systems in the aftermath of a renaissance can provoke magical thinking and previously rational beings. Talker. Madboy on the subject of the Adeptus Mechanicus. On another perspective. Looking over the orc codices from old to new the only record of orcs willing technology to work is one line in which a tech priest says well if we can't figure this out it must be magic. 
In fact the only source besides that codex entry is this 1d4chan page, all other lore being from the Tetch Priest perspective. The Orc Codex points out that mech boys and big mechs are genetically engineered by the brain boys old ones to know how technology works. In Evil Sun Rising, the big mechs who created the Stomper Fat Mork don't remember how they created their super compact, miniature red sun engine. The implication is that as the mechs work together that it unlocked the technology. This might mean that the brain boys old ones programmed the mech genetics to gain access to bigger and better equipment when the army is at a proper size to create and maintain such weaponry. As orc numbers grow and <coughs> become bigger more technology is unlocked. The Gorkinaut and Morkinaut walkers are unlocked when mechs begin thinking that a great <coughs> is coming along. Orc technology is special in many ways, while crude and impossible from an outsider perspective almost all of Orc technology is based on the idea of looting the enemy technology. They are the apex scavengers and can create weapons from technology of the Imperial, TAU, Elder, Necron, and even the biotechnology of the Tyranids. It could be guessed that the Brain Boys wanted Orcs to be able to adapt to any battlefield and be able to resupply without need of supply lines. In this way orcs don't need to wait for a spaceship to drop a titan to the battlefield for backup, instead they can build one out of that broken humi one. Special note on orky vehicles. To properly describe what orc vehicles are like is a difficult prospect, or perhaps an overlooked opportunity. Either way, few actually attempt to clarify in tangible terms what orcish vehicle makers create. Let's start with the venerable truck. Keep in mind that the standard orc boy is a hunched, monstrous, 7 foot tall hulk hogan. Now, the truck is essentially an oversized, skeletal pickup truck, with armored bus tires and a spiked ram plate for a bumper. The frame is then covered in all manner of inch thick armor plating, the basic standard in orcish vehicle armor. No orc vehicle with more than two wheels has an engine smaller than a V8, and the truck is no exception. A common brag for a truck owner, eyes put 12 cylinders in this air cart when not met with the classic you shoulder sprung fair 14 comeback is similar to a human saying he put an extra two cylinders in his car and overhauled his transmission. Larger orcish vehicles, like the big track, often use V14 engines that any human would say belongs on a fishing trawler. Alternatively, some vehicles use turbine engines for extra torque which is always a good thing and a higher top speed also a good thing. Or crackling electrical engines less popular than a good old combustion engine, but can accidentally tase pesky looters or enemies who get too close that is rammed. Big tracks are literally the size of a heavy tank, but are completely open top to provide a chassis for hauling boys or insanely big guns into the fight. They have banks of fat tired wheels or, most likely, 4 plus foot wide treads. They have as much torque as a battle wagon and fear no infantry. Special groups of orcs. Apart from the regular boys, there are several groups of orcs who specialize in a specific task or doctrine. Called odd boys if they are relatively normal when fighting time rolls around or wit boys when they shoot lighting out of their eyes, guns or eye guns. The most common ones are odd boys. This category is filled with orcs who express genetic predispositions to certain tasks. Here are your mech boys engineers, pain boys doctors, wit boys sickers, mad boys psychos, slavers runthaders take care of grots, snodlings and slaves, brewers makers of alcohol. Ritconned, rock as musicians, also ritconned, and shout as communications experts, cult of speed. Speed freaks who commonly go into the battlefield on bikes hyped up on Dakar and flashy bits, as their name suggests, these like going faster than fast. On tabletop, they're okay, since they're really shooty for orcs and fairly cheap. These guys feel the classic mobile orc army, which causes loads of butthurt and rage when people go up against them. Just look out for this cannons. Flipboys, crazed pilots that like fast vehicles, death defying stunts, and lots of dacca. The better pilots, fighter aces, are held in great esteem only by other flipboys and tend to give themselves crazy cool nicknames. Burner boys, burner boys are similar to standard orcs in ability, possessing no unique qualities except every one of them being a pyromaniac. These boys are the type who would burn their own mother alive if she tried to stop them from playing with matches, even though orcs technically don't have moms. As such, they regularly burn their own comrades for the hell of it to see them do the Bernie dance. Their obsession with fire is of course, genetically coded, and this has a particular disadvantage during periods of time where stealth is of the essence. In fact, this pyromania coupled with the rate of accidental deaths among orcs may explain why burner boys aren't more common. 
After all, an orc that accidentally burns himself to death wouldn't be able to spread his spore so easily. On a more light-hearted note, they are also quite fond of fungus cigars. Green is best. Mech boys. Mechs are orcs who are capable of making the ramshackle yet effective weapons and vehicles the orcs use. They're primarily the ones who makes the warbands wagons, restore salvaged vehicles, and create modify weapons. An orc who led bands of mech boys is called a big mech, and is a bitch to kill on tabletop if he's kitted out. 5 up cover saves for everyone. Ho says we ain't smart and such. Only fang better than an orc is an orc with a good bit of technology. Pain boys. Basically orcs medics. A pain boy's instinctive understanding, and obsession, is with medicine, anatomy and surgery. Unlike the mechs above with are seen with something like reverence, other orcs think pain boys are dangerous and won't go anywhere near them unless they really have to. This is because, like the mech boys, pain boys are driven mostly by their urge to explore and experiment and aren't very good at concentrating on what they're supposed to be doing. Which is okay when the mech tinkers with a piece of gear, but a lot worse when the doc starts poking around inside a body and removing bits at random just to see how it works. Tank busters. Many orcs enjoy the odd explosion. These guys like that so much that they decided what better way to get their kicks than to get into a nice squad of 5-15 boys and try blowing tanks sky high with their rockets. They also train squigs to run into tanks while strapped to the hilt with explosives. And if neither of that works, run into close combat and strike the tank with a rocket attached to a metal stick. They get so high off this that they will enter the broken vehicle, eat any survivors, and drink the motor oil in a ritual act known as getting tanked. Looters. Looters are orcs who are obsessed with pimping out their shooters by salvaging bits from their enemies. Looters are critically important to orcish mechanical industry, because they head salvage operations and assist mechs where grots can't. They're also the ones who loot wrecked tanks and vehicles after a battle to use as looted wagons, with the help of mech boys, which means orcs can remobilize rapidly, and scale up to match tank driving foes. When not fighting or looting, looter boys are a menace to orky society, stealing, swindling, making trouble, and being the reason other boys can't have nice things. What you say in dear's time when the orcs ain't fighting or looting? I oughta give ya a stamp. Flash jits. The pimpiest orc is the bestest orc. That is why they arrogant gits. They are another group of shooter obsessed orcs known as flash jits. Rich, obnoxious bad moons gits who buy powerful weapons and upgrades using their large stockpiles of teeth. Love nothing more than showing off their wealth and supposedly associated martial power. They do things like wearing fabulous clothing, sporting huge banners declaring their awesomeness shogun style, and plating everything they have in gold, silver, platinum or any other shiny metal they have at hand although gold is preferred. Golds is the bestest. Flash jits boast the shooties custom shoot as in all of orcdom, sometimes known as snaz guns, which makes them an invaluable asset to their clan. Conversely, due to their boasting and attitude problems they often alienate pretty much every other orc they work with, and are prone to getting their arrogant asses booted out of their group the moment they become less useful than annoying. Free booters. Orcs who raid and pillage the galaxy as metherficking pirates. And just to add to their awesomeness, they'll usually dress and or speak like pirates. <coughs> Well-known individuals include Captains Badrek and Bloodflag. Commanders. Orcs who manage to figure out that charging a gunline isn't always the best option, so Day's the sneakiest of the orcs. In practice, all of this boils down to a fairly simple difference in tactics. Whereas a normal orc boy will see the enemy and immediately shout, run up to him, and smash him in the head, a commando will see the enemy, hide behind a nearby bush barrel lamp post and wait for the enemy to get close like 5 feet to 2 meters, then shout, run up to him, and smash him in the head. They typically paint themselves purple, which orcs believe is the sneakiest color and because orcs are orcs. Purple does in fact make them harder to see, don't ask how the fuck that one works. It just does have you ever seen a purple orc? Course not. Day's too sneaky. Bandus rely on stealth tactics rather than bulls out firepower, and achieve this by using crude camouflage techniques, special forces equipment such as NVGS, various types of grenades, and all those other gubbins that makes them all sneaky. However, their best weapon is often that the concept of orcs using tactics beyond drowning their enemies in corpses and bullets is so completely out there that a lot of imperial commanders do not believe that commanders actually exist, which actually make their job easier to pull off. The imperials quite often find out the very hard way that some orcs have both brains and brawn. 
for instance. Nobody laughed when a commando unit suddenly hijacked a unit of 3D strike missile launchers inside a Mordian regiment's lines drove one to the front and proceeded to launch it at the there. Front lines. Killing thousands. Including a banner blade except for the orcs. Who laughed their faces off as this was happening. Meanwhile, the commanders ran off with the remaining one and two extra missiles. Commanders are typically distrusted by other orcs due to their chosen battle strategy. They view a sneaking about rather than getting straight to a fight, right and proper as mucking about. The enjoyment of the color purple among them is also considered right strange. As dear ain't no such thing as a purple orc. An orc asked about commando groups I didn't see anything. Do you? Fear orcs. Hidden away in GW fluff are these guys. These guys are what happens after <laughs> has left your planet. They crop up in wildernesses and form tribes. They don't have technology like shooters or any kind of mech boys or even good resources to build junk. They are roughly on par with your fantasy orcs, so you can just use your fantasy army in 40k if you can fluff your army right. Not like it matters. It's the same tactic either game. They tend to have grots. Commanders and wit boys coming out of their ears, and love to ride big squigs. If you don't prune them back to the forest well enough, they might sick buttloads of squiggoths on you. Snake bites love these guys, and if spaceborn orcs pick them up, feral orcs usually become snake bites anyway. They breed a special kind of odd boy, the pig dock, who is a combination of a mech and a dock, but excels at neither. They do surgical procedures like a stereotypical medicine man, wander around covered in robes and talismans given to them by the wit boy shamans, and head the construction of things like ballistas and catapults, all the way up to magical stompy idols and the steam gargant. Wit boys. Wit boys are orcs who are active sickers. All orcs are passive sickers, emitting their gestalt field, but wit boys are the only ones who can decide they're gonna blow another orc's face off with a mean look and a lightning bolt well. The only orcs who can decide to do it and it'll happen. They tend to be crazy and can blow up if they're not careful. Even when they are careful. Sometimes blowing up is the preferred expected option for a wit boy. Amusingly, most wit boys are cowards, in the sense that they know bad things happen whenever they get into a fight alongside a bunch of other orcs so they try to avoid doing that. The other orcs are often forced to drag them along. Rockus, rogue trader orcs with a penchant for hard rock. Metal, leather armor, and overgrown hair squigs. While still technically retconned, they do seem to keep cropping up in the fluff. Also known as Gothrockus, these boys tend to come out of the Goths exclusively, but it isn't completely unknown for other clans to spit out one of these crazy green musicians. They play machine gun guitars and party art. It should be noted that Rockus were invented in the 80s, so they don't play things like death metal as much as they do generic metal, 80s metal, electric guitar ballads, and hard rock. It should also be noted that they are still available on Games Workshop's site. Party on. Note the goth rockers essentially make the dawn of Wirai Orc theme canon. Shouters. These orcs have overdeveloped lungs and super strong vocal cords so that they can yell really loud. Yes, you heard me right. They yell across Gargan's tops and over battlefield into act as a telecommunications array. See, not all things that were retconned were too good to last. Shut up stupid Humi, what do you know? Shouters is the best. Yow's called that shoutin'? Yow's ain't a real shouter, Yajit. A real shouter. Drowns out the. Computition. I conquer. Is prefer sneaking up to some hummy and shoutin' in his ear from real gut close. Anyone caught messing with this section again will get their shit handed to them. Do you know how fucking hard it is to make sure this shit is right? I can't do this and dodge those fucking orcs. I'm a janitor, and a fucking bendy penis. See, if Finn Yao's had some of that purply paint, this wouldn't be a problem now, would it? He got Yao's good, he did. Anyways the squigs ate it the intern again. Jitte clean and dat what ya. I heard them cleaning orcs do what they do and don't even want no tea for it. Brewers. Again, not technically retconned, but never mentioned after about 3rd edition. Brewers, or brewer boys function much like mech boys or mad dogs do, knowing the ins and outs of brewing through genetically inherited intuition. They make alcohol out of squigs. Made everything from beers to malts to meads to liquors to scotches. Yes, certain squigs can be made into scotch. No, no grains are involved in the process. No, they've never done this in Scotland. No, you may not question this. Squiggy Walker, Red Label. Cosset zogs you in the brain faster. Eamed out of mushrooms to boost. 
Basically, they brew babies into beer sometimes. Heresy. Orc heresy. Any imperial citizens will be murdered on sight after reading this. Whamoy boss. Dem humus is trying to take away our squig juice. Zoggin damn it. Not again. Female orcs. My eyes. They burn. Vaguely referenced in older fluff and glimpsed during Blood Bowl. Sacrificed because nobody wants to see those canonized saggy orc tits except D. And fucking whores and ye mum. Suffice to say, some draw fags will still draw them and several on TG will doubtlessly fap to it. Considering how many random mutations are seen amongst the orcs, the possibility is more likely than you think. In normal canon, orcs are asexual, popping out of fungal growths in the ground. But in the older fluff, when the orcs were basically fantasy orcs in space, there were female orcs. Later fluff retconned this, so that in later parts of their life cycle orcs would temporarily develop sexual characteristics and go bang one another. For the sake of Games Workshop's writer's self-respect, this too was also retconned. And all but the draw fags are happy for that. All in all though, the idea of female orcs or goblinoids of any sort is much more readily accepted across most genres involving greenskins of any sort. So the decision may more likely have been to make the orcs dependent on getting blown up to repopulate along with being hardlined for blockbuster style war though, as with all evolution. This is mutable to change, as there are orcs like the blood axes who understand ideas like trading with the humies, peace and using functional armor and weapons that don't stop working just because the mob believes they are useless. See, humans are good for some fangs but not every fang. Oh I'm dwarf and what's this? Dat jit was crumped for dat post. Mad boys. Not seen since the hair days of 2nd edition and epic 40k, although they're still mentioned here and there in the fluff. Mad boys are orcs that go crazy under the mental strain of knowledge encoded in their genes suddenly becoming available, their behavior becoming erratic and unstable even for orcs. The other orcs often round them up into a large warband that is set loose upon the enemy, in the hope their madness will prove useful or at least entertaining. In game terms you rolled for their actions randomly, and it could vary from outright fleeing to going absolutely berserk and charging forward while ignoring wounds. Brain boys. Brain boys is how the orcs call the old ones. The retcon is that the orcs origin has shifted around a few times, such as the brain boys being the ancestors of the snotlings although the orcs still believe that. But it's no longer the official explanation it was in Road Trader. That's still canon. Codex 7th ED 2014 and where seen it in the one before that on. Watch rooms did ya zoggin gits eat. Orc clans. Oh I, listen up ya gits. Dear six different magic clans of orc. And days all right art. The clans was made way back by the biggest, baddest warbus dear Eva was, starting out as his specialist boys before they became day own clans. Deers the snake bites, and days a bunch of fundy gits what won't use any technology more complicated than a chopper and war paint. Anytime deers a world <laughs> mashed up, it gets full of fundy boys. When we pick em up, they run off to the snake bites anyway instead of learning how to fight proper. But they got squiggaths, and every <laughs> needs really big killy tings. Snake bites wear brown, like a bunch of zoggin Amish folk. The bad moons, what gots lots of teeth cause they grow faster than any other orcs. So days a bunch of rich gits. That means that days got the best squigs and dacca, but since days such lazy gits, days no good at chopping and stomping, so other orcs can always just find a bad moon and stomp his teeth out. Bad moons wear yellow, to color a big booms and shiny bits. Goths are a bunch of gloomy gits what don't ever have any fun and don't give a grot's toss about Dakar. But days summer do are their sovel de orcs. Gazkal Maguruk Thracker himself was a goth. That's why he's so big, ard, and mean. Goths wear black, to color a bend dead ard. De evil sons re all part of the cult of speed, and Ava got the most mechs. So they re always muckin' about with technological equipment and speedy carts. Day's big believers are the color red, cause red uns go faster. Death skulls are a bunch of teven. Lootin' gits what'll grab anything what's not nailed if it's nailed down they'll loot the nails then loot the thing that was nailed down and make it orky. Anything. Even in the middle of a scrap. The mechs loves them, though, cause nobody's got more bits and gubbins than a death skull looter. Death skulls all seems to have some kind of technical no what's. No. Death skulls wear the color blue, cause blue's a lucky color. And, last of all but not least, dears the blood axes. They read the ones what have been hanging around the stinkin' humies fair ages too long. 
and gone and developed all sorts of unorky things like tactics and reconnaissance and camouflage and worse of all the magical and feared cry of retreat. Deva even got a saying about it if we runs for it, it don't count as losing, cause we can also come back for out of a go. See days mocked as cowardly gets by most of the boys. But cause they be dead cunning days the main source of the best war bosses at <laughs> Time next day the prophet himself. And it's our way. <laughs> time, Yajit. Blood access where camouflage, but at least they painted nice and bright so you can see him coming. Later, when the Humies learned that there were six beasts, and each led a legend of boys, they started thinking that each of the clans were the Ren. We, leftovers of each beast's legend. Oh oh knows if that's the truff, I sure as Zog dono. Orc non clans. Then there's the freebooters. Boys what left dear clan to become mercs and pirates and that, freebooters is often kicked oh dear clan for licking something that I z ain't violence more than violence. Like Captain Badrup Teeth. Was Daka guts mech going fast, or Zodger had worked snagger snotlings, but some leave oh dear own record for similar reasons, like Captain Blood Flag Loot. Free booters will even work for stupid yumis for shinies or hats, though that don't mean they won't turn round and have a go at them too. Fear orcs are like snake bites, because they don't have a choice, what with not even access to orc culture seeing as they don't have space travel. Often join the snake bites as soon as they's recruited by a <laughs> Speed freaks is what you call the members of the cult of speed, a club any orc what likes going fast a lot can join, not just their evil sons. What is the measure of a clan? It's easy to think that orc clans are just galaxy spanning groups of like minded orcs. Like there's just 6 huge fucking groups of orcs around the galaxy but as we all know, if orcs were that united, the rest of the races would have a real big problem on their hands. Orc clans are more like 6 types of orc personality that might have been engineered into the orcs way back by the old ones or created by the beasts legions in M32. Maybe they appeared on their own. Who knows? Let's take a random orc boy as an example. All orcs love a good scrap, looting and of course decker. However, the individual orc boy tend towards one type of orcitude over others. Maybe he's more into crashing into his enemies at high speeds which would make him an evil son or maybe the looting after the battle is his jam making him a death skull. As a single boy in a large mob. His preferences doesn't really matter, he'll just have to follow his knob or get crumped. So it is the leaders and or majority clan of an orc warband who'll decide how the mob acts. So a large horde of orcs led by a goth warbus will likely use black and white paint on their stuff and prefer melee combat like goths would. But that doesn't mean that every single orc in the mob is a goth. When orcs gather for wargs they tend to form new mobs that are actually comprised mainly of one clan of orcs. The large amount of orcs in the warg makes it easier for them to organize themselves into groups of similar interests. That's where the huge Mad Max-esque hordes of evil sons bikers and trucks on Armageddon come from. Orc daily life. Your average orc home. Quite cozy when it comes down to it, really. Morning. Get up. Doesn't matter when. But usually in the mid-morning, unless a knob kicks him in the face cause he is late for something, which he usually is. Next eat. Either the breakfast his pet grot brings him or the grot itself. Orcs don't much care it all tastes the same dipped in mud and fried on a stick chased with some fungus beer. Hit the drops. Yes the communal act of using the local bog. Literally, he might get a scar on his duff to show off if the squigs are feisty that morning. Then swagger about and try to find new things to kill. Or new ways to kill things. This lasts till about noon. Noon lunch. Fungus rums and beers. Squig pies and mushroom fries. Plenty of fights break out at lunch usually from a looter stealing another orc sweet squig dessert. Or some knob mouths off when drunk. Either way lunch. Next nap time recreation. Most orcs, having spent a very busy day trying to think up new ways to kill or new things to kill, will take a nap. Usually the average rank and file lad who has nothing better to do. It is around now that the more specialized orcoids shall gather in their respective mobs and set about spending afternoon and early evening doing what they do best. Be it practicing blowing crap up if tank busters, racing around the camp as speed freaks, helping the mechs if looters or burners, hiding in plain sight if command move along, nothing to see air, evening work time. The boss or local big mech or warped bullies most everyone around the camp center and gets up on his <laughs> banner tower and starts to bark out orders on what they will attack that night, or where they will hit to steal material to build his next project. Or give a flashy psycho pyrotechnic light show during a prophetic chant. Though sometimes if no one got up till half past five they plan it during the early morning. 
Depending on the clan majority this can be as simple as smash dis a goth too. Okay this team needs to be air right when the rockets hit or we won't yet blood axes don't know when to shut up thump zog in yumis. Midnight the walking hour. Do what was stated in the evening until they get tired and go home to bed. It don't count as failing cause they will try again tomorrow. Or pull it off and party all night to the dismay of the defeated until they pass out. Even the daily life of the orc is a minute. <laughs> Reasons it rocks to be an orc. Wes got a shiny new 7th Orcdition Codex thingy. Wes the biggest and the strongest. Wes made fair fighting and winning. Wes got more boys than anyone else. All an orc evil wants to do fover is to keep fighting, winning, and looting. Dem mech boys can loot anything and I mean anything. Previous record has been made of note to order Xenos for immediate actions to be taken. The Emperor protects. Um, what was that? Zog, I've lost count of the resins for being an orc. Wes already know everything what's worth learning. Wes the second least grim duck race in the galaxy, but the best green duck ha ha ha. The pain boys can fix ya up right and proper, even if ya bloody heads chopped off. Wes got the shiniest bits, or Wes bout to crump the jit that does. Only ya fight, the bigger and stronger ya get. Teeth's legal tender. Punching some jit in the face gets ya's a day's meal. All ya have to worry about is foin. Lootin', speedin', sneakin', or mukin' round with some technical gubbins that's what's used for foin'. Lootin', speedin' or sneakin'. The grots do the rest. If the mech boy can fix it, he can build it. And if he says it works, he's right. Where's the orcs and they is not. Dem yumis and marine boys scream and fair the emperor. And dem spiky boys yell in blood for the blood god is nothing compared to- <laughs> The red ones will always go faster. Purple is the sneakiest collar. Yellow is the splodiest collar. Blue is the lukiest collar. Green is the walkiest collar. I has a hole in me chest and a chopper stuck to me leg. Didn't notice it while I was crumping them spiky boys. Unlike them yumis, grayskins, and pansies, anyone can be a warbus using nothing more than a chopper and a little bit odaka. Even if all the boys get crumbed, where's still win. The only way that gets Kanzogas off is by dacking the Ole bloody planet. Yaz can trade in yeah daka fair moa chopper, or vice versa, and you is still orky enough. Yaz gan build an army of cereal boxes and duct tape and maybe a bit of spickers and bits and still look real smart and orky. Rolling a double six with shock attack gun. Some jit shoots 90% of your squad, but the knob smacks one boy on the head and everybody is doing good. Yaz gun legally talk like a retard proper ad jit. Giving the boys a frying pan on the head and a fender on the shoulder makes them harder. Putting them in a fridge mac has them megard. Yaz gun use every army's guns, but none gun use yours. If you die you get proper afterlife with lot of fine and booze, instead of being raped by laughing demons for eternity. Yaz don't have to hate everything that's not a orc. You will die of laughing if you play orcs. If edition is the horde edition. Wes can field more boys than them humies or bug fingies. No matter what happens to the rest of the galaxy, be it chaos winning, the Imperium conquering all the planets, the Elder successfully resurrecting their gods, or the God Emperor stepping down from his throne, you still have a 99.99999% chance of surviving in some capacity. There are orcs living in the warp for gork's sake. Where's the command win as of Soulstorm? That means we crump them undread banner blade thingies. Lastly, and most importantly, the main reason it rocks Tady and Orc is this. <coughs> Reasons it sucks to be an Orc. You're the one species that is actually dumber than humanity. Heresy. Thump lock boss I got me one of them yumis. Your war cry wag is overused by everyone. Leak if fodder imprise it ent over us to zell. No matter how hard you try, you will never achieve enough daka. And if you did, it'd end up destroying you too. A tragedy, that is. Despite having some awesome looking guns, you can't shoot things for shit. Your standard ballistic skill is 2 which means at best hitting things on a 5. And when you do shoot somebody successfully it's probably due to sheer volume of bullets more than anything else. You say that like it's a zog in bad fame. Your sole purpose in stories is to distract the space marines and the imperial guard from more dangerous threats like chaos, tyranids or necrons. But Wes get to have a real great fight with less Ben a distraction. So ITZ still all good. Also have you even read a beast arises we zog dem hummies up. Your army falls apart at the seams the minute your warbus dies. Nah, we's just got to figure out was in charge next. Dan we comes back around to thump em again. Hiss. 
By that time we've nom 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 don you crunch another ed fermi pointy stick. Anytime you use anything, from your smallest pistol to your largest spaceship, you have the same chances of surviving its use as a grot snuggling an overcharged standard issue imperial plasma gun. Offset by the fact you can survive 4th degree burns, decapitation, being septic, and acquiring space tetanus. Oil, doc. What's this titana thingy? Can we squish it? In second egg there was an alarming risk that your entire army might die before the battle actually started because almost no orc units had sealed armor. Orcs done need armor. Not when orcs got daka. Smash them gits without it. You have a mushroom and two spore pods dangling between your legs, and Kroot find it a delicacy. Good meat back or what? Thump I dunno what this done said but it hurt me eyes so I crumped it. You're part of squad broken. Oh, and what's that den? Arrgh, me eyes. Me zoggin eyes. Some win get the wind boy, maybe he can zap me so hard I forget. Some hume is gonna pay for this, damn it. You haven't had a new codex since 4th edition, and it's starting to show. Shut it ya jit, we's the walks and yow's a bunch of pansy gits. Besides, we is going to get new codex dear 6th ed. Oh I boss where's got a 7th edition codex before the pansy gits did. And now where's got a shiny new 7 orc edition codex thingy. Zoggin gork. This e edition codex is dead Kali. And now you don't have a codex anymore. There is a slight chance that Mattered is going to write 6th edition codex. If so, in the next codex you'll read something like this the orc's insatiable thirst for violence is, really, just a way of coping with the angst they feel that no matter what they do, they will never be ultramarines, who keeps letting deshumies in air. Where's bloody infested? Get the burners. Also Mattered is apparently too busy with pestering Forge World for more space marine resin collections to be converted into plastic for the main product line to be bothered with our humble bumbling. Green skins. Tip a kill you me be a Always ignoring the orky things in life and only paying attention to zoggin yumi things. Downright shameful dat is. The only real orky yumi dear is is that Captain Yerik. Gork. Or a. Is it Mork? Bless his hurt. Trust us greenskin. Matt Ward ignoring you is a good thing. But wasn't he fired for being an annoying grot? I got the burners. We have in a BBQ. Make mind crispy and don't forget the extra squig sauce. Orcs do not draw psychic power from the warp. But still take perils of the warp. Dem wit boy jits just awked too hard. If there ain't any storm boys, your army can get crumped by the blue jits real easy like. No not dem blue gits the other ones with the nice daka and puny stompers cruncho eye. Who let the grot do the talking? We just smash dem blue boys wit to our choppers when we get close. And if dat don't work we just match dear amount of daka wit some pretty killy shooters. Unless they send the red commit though, good thing they got rid of him. Even though there is one humi that fights good and hard and is real dead killy, he is the greatest enemy of the orcs. Thunk the greatest enemy of the orcs is the red commit. That blue boy's stomper is three times faster than a regular one. You probably don't have a penis. You can piss on space marines, only to die a short while later. Is that bad thing? Umi says that it very hurts when we hit him in it. Wait, that what they call the mushroom spore pods? Poor suckers. They have pain nerves down that way. No wonder they scream so bad when we kick em there. Even some vegetarians will eat you not if we eat them first. Ha, huh, you all piss yourselves at the very mention of the name of a certain red armored swordsman. Where's just be so excited cause that blue boy actually puts up a fight. More so than the orcs did against an old ethereal with a pointed stick. Crump shut it ya great lanky blue grot that red comet ain't got not in on Yerik. The comet just has a good choppy bit. Yerik just says to look at ya funny to zog ya. Thunk the red comet was tearing boys with his stomp as bare hands before he found the chopper ya grot. One of your gods has the voice of Robin Williams. Is it a bad thing? You have to deal with Vance Stubbs fans refusing to admit that they lost Korova. The only real defeat is people pretending you never won. But then we get to crump this butter gits and have a real gut fight. What's the problem with that? Honestly, orcs are great. Like, who doesn't love our boys in green? Like, come on, they're just, you know, orcs, okay, they're very crude and vulgar, but they've just got so much charm to them. Like, you know, orcs are great. Like, you know, they just, I don't know, there's something about them. I'd love to have an orc army, but, like, you know, I'm never going to sit down and paint, like, a hundred boys, because that's really what you need to be able to field an orc army, you know? But, sure, what can you do? Though, as always, at the end of any of these 1D4chan videos that I do, just go onto the site, 
and also get lost in it. It's such a it's pro, if, 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 if it probably is for me. I would say it's probably is the best fan made forty k website out there. It's got thousands of articles. They're all fucking hilarious. I love the way they're written. It sounds like you know you're almost talking to your friend about it. It doesn't feel like you know you're reading like you know a proper official article it feels like you know you're just sitting talking chatting about 40k and that's the shit that i really enjoy that's what i think that makes 40k for me you know what i mean it's the social aspects that i really enjoy so look definitely go ahead check it out just get lost and it's so much fun uh also let us know who you think i should cover next time like you know the comment with the most amount of likes wins of course and we'll just see what you guys pick like you know hopefully there's someone good i i i tend to prefer whenever we go for more like you know unusual people the people that maybe not a lot of people know about or you know what i mean just one of those like out there characters that like you know maybe deserve a bit more attention than what they already get you know what i mean like i'd hate to end up doing like a fucking space Marines video for the love of god I'm going to end up doing a Space Marines video next time, aren't I? Shit. Well, anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, make sure to click that notification bell to stay up to speed. Check out all the links down below. Uh, hope you guys have enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?